So this tire actually dug out of the dry wash of a mining camp at about, I don't know, 7,000 feet in elevation. And in this video, I'm going to cut it in half using one of those vibrating sort of saws, a cast saw. I think they call it a sonic saw or a sonic crafter or something like that. Anyways, I'm going to cut it in half using that because I got a project that I want to try to make with this. Now this tire is in really, really bad shape. It, it actually, the rubber is so spongy, it soaks up moisture. The thing is soggy and squishy, almost like a sponge. Really unusual. But cutting it open was kind of a fascinating deal. and It was kind of cool to see how it was made. It was so much different inside than I was expecting. Now at this point I've cut a bunch of them apart using a number of different ways. Uh, my most common way is a skill saw and a big steak knife. This tire however cut differently. In fact it cut really really hard. It, it didn't act like the other tires. And we don't see why until we get it open. It's totally different inside. Yep. Well you ready to take the lid off this tire? We're going to see inside this tire for the first time and very, very, oh, I still got strings attached. patches in it. It's got bright green patches. Wow. Now we got another a bit of loose strings. Maybe we'll find out where those strings are coming from. Yeah. Oh, all them. Now the first thing I'll draw your attention to is just how thick this thing was. It had a good half inch of rubber. When I saw it, and as bald as it was, I expected it to be really quite thin. But it wasn't. It was still staggeringly thick. And it kind of helps me understand how these tires might have survived back in the day. Look how thick this tire is. It has really come apart though. See, there's a patch. They patched a hole in the side of the tire. And there are two patches in the center of the tire. We cut that one in half. And the tire's gone all soft and squishy. Yeah. It's in rough shape. Oh, I don't know if we can use this. We could use it, but we might have to spray with boxes. Look at the size of that patch. There, they tried adding what appears to be a chunk of other tire. There must, have been, a, there must have been a huge hole in this thing someplace. And they added that chunk of other tire to pad the tube out. We should keep this pad, because you never might see this again <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. unless the zombies come, you probably won't see fixes like this in car tires. Pretty cool, huh? Yep. That thing is twice as old as I am. Twice as old as I am. Way older than you. And if you, if we post the picture up on the thorn tree, click on the thorn tree. If we do that? Yeah. You want to go make a video about the thorn tree? Mm-hmm. Will you narrate it for me? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go. Yeah, more on the tree video later. 
I don't know. This was just sort of a weird thing. I, I didn't expect to find this very interesting. I needed this footage for another video, but I found it very fascinating. I mean, look at this. This is the side that was sitting face down, but it was probably sitting face down for 60 years. The tread was completely worn off of it, but it was also quite clear that it was nowhere near breaching. But when you saw the size of that patch inside there, which I think was on a sidewall rip, I mean, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. We wouldn't even consider such things today. The shaking must have been accompanying that. And the rubber had, had got this gummy consistency. and The entire uh, bead had completely broken down and it was just a fuzzy, gooey mess. I don't know. I really find this kind of stuff cool. And there aren't many videos looking inside a tire this old. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And you named it Redwood Tree. Yes. So we have a birch tree named Redwood planted in our front yard. And he is going to be a sweet little tree. He definitely is. <laughs>